happy Monday. It is Monday, March 14th. And <laughs> once again, I did not update it all this weekend. But that's because I don't really have any updates from this weekend. I didn't end up picking up anything. I was going to pick up a book last night and I did not. I got as far as picking out a bookmark and posting that I was starting it on Goodreads and on Instagram and that's it. But I'll do that our calendar and then I have a couple little extra stuff to talk about and then we will go from there. So let's do the calendar first. So we ended last week, last week's vlog. Um, we are in the Lord of the Tournaments. Since we haven't, we are at the beginning of a new week. I am playing the Quest Calendar 2022, The Gates of Terralon. This is an almost daily calendar based off of tabletop role playing games. The uh, 2023 edition is on Kickstarter right now. I think it's through the end of the month. So I'll link it down below so you can check it out. So we are currently in the middle of like the final events of the Lord, uh, of Tournament of the Lords. So Friday, we fought some people. We killed the two people. And we did not defeat the tiger, which I am okay as. And let's see what was going to happen this weekend and then what happens today. So we have two days to go through. Okay, ooh, looks like chariots. Fun. All right, you mount a chariot with the other contestants and begin a race around the arena. This is much this is as much for show as it is to further eliminate the contenders. The chariots move fast and spears fly through the air as you each try to remove the other competitors. So, we have two steps. One Put a, pull ahead in the race, roll a d20 plus wisdom, reminder animal tamer, which we do have. And then number two is avoid the hazards that could take you out, roll a d20 plus dexterity. And that is our strong suit. So that's, hopefully things will go a lot better this, this round here. So let me get my dice. Okay, so number one is pull ahead in the race. So our wisdom is a plus one, plus we get a plus two from animal tamer, so grand total of plus three. And that is a 13, so 16. Okay, so 15 or more, you are able to coax the horses into pulling ahead in the race. Their speed is impressive and you maneuver through the competition. This makes you a target as others try to injure and kill you. Take a negative two penalty to avoid the hazards of the race, number two below. But we gain two tournament points. So I'm going to mark two tournament points. That brings us up to four total so far. All right, one, two, and we take a minus two. And this is our dex roll, because this is avoiding the hazards, and our dexterity is a plus four, so we're at a plus two. And, ooh, a 17, perfect, so that's a 19. Okay, so 15 or more. You avoid several spears as they fly past you or hit your cart. A racer near you takes a swing at your head. You duck to avoid it, which throws them off balance. They fall out of their chariot. You gain one tournament point. Cool. So there's another point. So we were at five tournament points. And this was Saturday and Sunday's day. So that's the chariot race. We'll show it again here. The artwork is super fun. And let's see what today's calendar is. Ooh, boy. That is a big, scary sacklops. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have four rounds of attacking. Okay, you and the final contestants are pitted against a great surprise. As you catch your breath and await the final battle, the Coliseum rumbles, the crowd go grows silent. Then you hear a deafening roar as a gigantic cyclops lumbers into the arena. Also, happy pie day. I thought about stopping on the way home and at the store and getting a pie, but I was like, I don't want to stop at the store just for pie. So if I was thinking about it, I would have bought pie last week when I went grocery shopping, but I did not. So I don't know, maybe I'll buy a piece of pie when I go shopping later this week and have a late celebration. Or I just will not worry about it. I like pie. I just don't have pie very often except 
during holiday times. And I will get like a coconut cream pie sometimes in the summer months, usually around my birthday for the longest time. I'm not like, I don't like chocolate cakes, but a lot of the times growing up, I would get a coconut cream pie instead of a birthday cake because I love coconut. But anyway, let's do the calendar. But happy Pi Day. <laughs> All right. So our attack is a plus four. And there is nothing, no bonuses or anything like that that I see. So we're going to go through four rounds and see what happens. So that is a 12. So that gives us a 16. Okay. So if your attack roll is 12 or more, we hit the Cyclops. So we hit... Our damage is a D10. Alrighty. And that is a nine. Nice. Okay, so our damage roll is five or more. So he is stunned this round. So he is stunned. Alright, and that means he does not attack us. So round two. And that is an eight plus our four. That gives us a 12. Ooh, once again, if your attack roll is 12 or more, you hit nice just barely so we'll roll damage for round two and that is ooh another nine nice and okay so damage roll four or more he is stunned again all right attack number three we're once again looking for 12 and that is a 15 on the die so nice we will roll damage again and that is a four. Um, we are on round three. Ah, three or more is done this turn. Sweet. And last round, round four, also looking for a 12. And that, ooh, nat 20. Heck yeah, we finish in style. But there is no rule for nat 20s in this game. But it's exciting every time you roll a natural 20. And that, ooh, it rolled behind my tripod here. Let me scooch. <laughs> okay, that is a seven. Okay, and the damage roll is five or more, so the Cyclops dies. Okay, so we have killed the Cyclops, and we stunned him for all three rounds, and we killed him. Okay, so we stunned the Cyclops for three rounds, so we earned three tournament points. And then if we killed the Cyclops, we earn an additional two points. So that brings us up to a total of 10 tournament points. Nice. We, we did some damage with this Cyclops. So that is it quest calendar wise for today. I'm not sure. It said us and the final contestants. So I'm guessing there's only going to be a day or two left figuring out what's going on with this and then moving on to the next portion of the storyline, but we'll see. I know sometimes because you're just doing a little bit a day, it can take a little bit longer to get through some events, but I'm okay with that. So while I kind of put this away, I will talk a little bit about Under the Oak Tree. I have officially hit 103 chapters, I think. So I think I'm going to do a review and kind of do stats and stuff. It's a little annoying because it, my stats for this are going to be really crazy. So I don't know if I'm going to do... Because up to a certain point, I'm only allowed one chapter a day. But if I had all of it, I would have read this all in just a few days. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet getting it in my stats, but I do at least want to do a review and count it as a book that I've read for the month of February and March because it technically I started it in February, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. But anyway, so we are, so we're over a hundred chapters. So I'm going to kind of count this as a book read for my, or at least for my, how many books I've read stat. And I'm trying to think last time I updated about Under the Oak Tree. So Princess Agnes was visiting. I, I can't remember how far we got in, but Princess Agnes has since left and there hasn't very been, there hasn't been much growth or 
openness between Riften and Maxi. <sighs> but I feel like, I don't know, I keep feel like we're getting closer and closer to something happening or something triggering them talking about things. But they just are both such boneheaded internal people. I'm just like, just talk it over, please. <sighs> but I'm still really enjoying it. I... Even if I don't read a chapter every night, what I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll check in and I'll use my free video to unlock that chapter for the night in case I get something, in case I end up picking something else. But I kind of gave up re reading, I didn't give up, but I just kind of got, got outside of reading Heart of Darkness. I definitely do want to go back to it at some point, but I kind of hit a little bit there where I wasn't. I was picking it up right before bed and I was too tired to read two chapters and I just wanted to read Under the Oak Tree. So I just stuck with that. But I'm still really enjoying it. I don't know how I'm going to do it stats wise right now. And it's kind of hard. I think I'm what I might do is just post a review on my website for the first 100 chapters. But it's really hard to rate it. Because I feel like in the beginning it was a five star. I was really interested in seeing where this is going. But right now I'm feeling like it's more of a four star because I want there to be more progression. We have seen Maxi learn a lot of healing magic and she's healing people. And she just really wants to be useful to Riften because she's afraid if something happens and he finds out about how she was really raised and that she's not like the typical noble lady that she th she thinks he wants and needs she wants to still be useful so she she so he won't just ship her back to her father cuz if she has healing abilities he might just at least keep let her stay in anatole to help heal people or and help the rem dragon knights we also have um some scouts ha that have come up with information that some of the more sentient monsters um up north it's like on the other side of this continent that they're on are like trolls and orgers ogres and goblins i think and there might be a couple other monsters but they're starting to put together an army and a lot of people are like uh they're the more sentient creatures but they're still not fully sentient creatures and other people are like no they're they're putting together an army and they are raiding and causing issues so maxi is now worried that riften and the rem dragon knights will be forced to go on to this campaign against this monster army and it could take years and she doesn't want him to leave because she is completely falling in love with him even though she hasn't really realized that that is what she's feeling for him and she doesn't want to be left alone for that long and she thinks that she can be helpful and she doesn't want something to happen to him and she wants to go with him if he does end up going to this thing so she can he potentially heal him but you know they don't talk about it and they both, you can just see them reading the emotions off the other person's face and not reading them correctly. Or like him seeing that she's worried and he thinks that she's worried because because he's expecting her to be like a stereotypical noble and she's more worried about the finer things and not being able to have access to her pretty gowns and stuff like that. And she's just worried that he's going to come back alive. <laughs> So there's that kind of miscommunication and they haven't really talked about, talked at all. And I really, really want them to talk and open up and they don't have to go over everything, but I, I need them. I need someone to open up a little bit. He kind of doesn't want her learning magic and we don't really know why he doesn't want her learning magic. I think it, part of it might be because her learning, at least healing magic, could put her potentially in dangerous situations, but that's never explicitly stated. So they both just need to be a little bit more verbal. But otherwise, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know how many chapters the original Korean version is. I think there's 130-ish, 140-ish on web novel right now. But unless you're paying for all the extra, like benefits of getting everything that's there I'm completely caught up on what you can unlock a day for free
but yeah so there is that I have last week's vlog to edit tonight so I'm gonna put on some of my avalanche 360 that's like behind the scenes um, and interviews and fun things for the Colorado Avalanche which is the hockey team here if you didn't know that I'm a huge hockey fan Avs are my team but after that I need to start because I did not read it this weekend, The Proposal by Mary Met Balog. This is the Rake Appreciation Society book for this week. And the meeting is on Thursday. But, <laughs> so tomorrow night I have the Avalanche game. And Wednesday night I don't really have many plans. So I'm hoping to get this, start this tonight and finish it by Wednesday night. It should be, I mean it's a historical and I can read through them pretty quickly. Although it is on the larger size, it looks like it's about 360 pages, which is a little bit on the longer side for a historical. I feel like usually they're in the like 340-ish range, but I mean, it's not that too much. It's not that much longer. This will be the second Mary Balog. Oh, and I did get, I do have the step back. So it's the guy on the front and the girl on the step back. This gorgeous, pretty dress. But this is the second Mary Balog I'm going to read. I read the first book, Gilded Web, last year. Oh boy, I had issues with it. I gave it three stars and that was being generous. But I'm, I'm intrigued to see this because I think this is going to be a reread for Jen. So I'm, I'm intrigued to read something else. And I feel like this is a little bit of a newer style than what the, killed, the Gilded Web was. But I'm not 100% sure. But I do know that she is a favorite author for a lot of people. So I will be picking this up later tonight. And then the last thing we have here <laughs> is I saw on Instagram, somebody shared it in their stories, I think, that the cover to cover is a book box. And I'll link them down below. But they did a Bridgerton swag pack for Bridgerton season two. And that was delivered today. And if I remember correctly, it's it's something, I mean, it's just in this little envelope here. So I think it's supposed to be like bookers and stick, bookers, it's gonna be bookers, bookmarks and stickers and stuff. And I think it was like $20, maybe less than that was shipping. But I, ha I had to get it. I didn't, like, I got some Bridgerton swag with the first, when the first season came out. But The Viscount Who Loved Me is my favorite book of the series. So I'm loving that all of these, like, things are coming out for it. Okay, and this is just the thank you for your order. Alrighty, so we've got a little package here. Look at this washi tape. This is super pretty. I'm excited. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of stickers. A lot of stickers. Ah. So this is B is for Bridgerton. And like bees are coming back in like style. <laughs> I've seen a lot of like bee stuff and I don't know if it's because of Bridgerton, but my brain thinks it's because of Bridgerton. And this says, spill the tea, lady whistle down, society papers, extraordinary people, extraordinary news. Super pretty. <laughs> and it's got the three boys, A, B, and C, when in doubt, marry a Bridgerton. Focus. My gosh, I love that. These are definitely going up on my bookshelf. And then Flawless, my dear. Pretty. <laughs> and this says single taken or saving myself for the Viscount. Yes. And then this is a Viya. I can't tell if it's a sticker or a bookmark, but this is. Anthony from the TV show. <gasps> oh my gosh. So these are clips. And I don't know if they're what if they're from like stills or whatnot, but this is Anthony and Kate established 1814. 
Look at it. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And then here's another one. Oh, I love, I love this outfit and all of the teaser information. Okay, and then it's the same on the front and the back. You have to live each hour as if it's your last and each day as if you were immortal. And it is signed Kate Sheffield. So this is probably a quote from the book. It's over here on the side. But in the, but in the TV show, if you didn't know, um, she is of, I want to say Indian descent. So, she, so they changed her name, um, her and her family's name from Sheffield to Sharma. And then here's an Anthony one on a horse. It says, love's about finding the one person who makes your heart complete, who makes you a better person than you ever dreamed you could be. Anthony Bridgerton. Oh my God, I love these. Ah, and these are good thick stock. I can't wait to use these. I most definitely will be using my Anthony and Kate and I had picked out a bookmark yesterday to use. I had picked out a, I had a clear bookmark from Alice in Wonderland that says we're all mad here, but I will be using my Anthony and Kate bookmark because this is a historical, although I don't need the excuse. <sighs> and we will just put that right in there and we will do that. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I don't, I don't know if it'll still be available when it goes up, but I'll link cover to cover down below. Um, so you can see it and maybe she'll have extras. I don't, this is the first purchase that I've ever made from um, her company. So I don't know a hundred percent how it is, but I'm super duper excited about all of these. And I cannot wait to make these stickers into magnets and get them on my bookshelf. I have a huge pack of stickers. I haven't, I haven't transferred them onto my magnetic sheets in a while, but I'm super excited and I love bookmarks. So I will get those in my bookmark bag. And I think, okay, I think this is just a vinyl printed. I don't think this is a sticker and I don't want to pull. I think this is a bookmark. So I'm going to put that in my bookmarks just to be safe. I didn't want to like rip it off because <laughs> it does look like this top layer is attached. The photo layer is attached, but I think it was just like ironed or glued onto the cardstock. I don't think it's supposed to come off, but I don't want to peel it off if it's not supposed to be peeled off. So I will stop playing with that. But anyway, there's that. I'm going to get back to editing and Hopefully I will be able to make a little bit of progress tonight on the proposal, but I will update you as soon as I have made some progress. Although let's be honest, the way things have been going the past couple of weeks, I might not update till this is over, but at the very least we should be able to do my calendar tomorrow. But anyway, I'll stop rambling and I'm going to get to editing and then reading. I will see you soon. Happy Wednesday. I did not update yesterday on Tuesday because one, I didn't read anything. <laughs> I had plans to read because the avalanche game didn't drop the puck till 8.30 last night. And it ended slightly early. It ended at before 11.15. So it was a fairly quick game, but I was on the phone with my boss for over five hours last night, just talking. And so, yeah. So I didn't really read anything, which is not good. <laughs> so when I got home today, I read a little bit before watching the Married at First episode, Married at First Sight episode, which aired tonight, which I just finished and it's almost 1030. So, but I am as far into the proposal by Mary Balog. This is chapter five and page 77. So I don't know how far I'm going to get. And through this tonight, I am, I am intrigued to see how it's going. I, it did take me a little bit longer to get this far than expected. And I'm just struggling slightly in, I don't know, the writing style. Like I'm finding it easy for my mind to wander while I'm reading it. So it's just not quite engaging me completely yet, but. I'm definitely at least intrigued to see how it goes. So we have our hero 
is Hugo. And so this is the, I think it's called the Survivors Club series. And what it is, is him and five friends, I guess, although they're closer than friends, um, all convened at the Duke, a Duke's house. Let me see. It's in the prologue, his name. I think he's the Duke of Stanbrook. Yeah, Stan Brooke, and his name is George. And so he lost his son in, I want to I wanna say it's the Napoleonic Wars is the time period we're at. But so what happens is Hugo, who's our hero in this book, and four other former office, officers and military men came to the Duke of Stan Brooke's country estate to recuperate and heal and then there's also a widow and she is there because she saw her husband taken as a prisoner of war and tortured and killed in front of her and then there's the duke so it's six of them in total and the dukes lost his son in the napoleonic wars but he was also um, a military man in wars from his generation but he lost his son in those wars so that's kind of how he became like more than willing to open up his house to help people convalesce and heal from uh whatever tragedies they might have faced in the war and these people were there I want to say for three years I think is what they lived or no it's been three years since they left but they got really close and then so what they decided to do is they formed the survivors club and every year they all meet back up and they spend three weeks just kind of reconnecting and spending time with each other and just the way that they that Hugo kind of mentioned it once is just resetting and helping touch base with everybody else to move on and make sure that they're moving on healthily is kind of the vibe I got with their lives. So Hugo is, he missed the previous year and this is the third year since they decided to do this yearly meeting. So this is the third meeting, but he let, he missed last year's because his father had a heart attack, I think a heart attack and then ended up, ended up dying or a seizure or something like that. But so he missed last year's meetup. And while he's there, He's talking about, so Hugo's father was like a businessman, merchant. It sounds like he was kind of more in the high class because he made a lot of money. But Hugo did military acts and received a title. And so he's called Lord. I can't remember what his title is. Yeah, it just says Lord. So I don't think I found out yet, but if I did, I didn't realize that was his title. But so he has the title now and then he got all of his father's inheritance when he passed. And then he also became guardian of his half sister because his father knew that if his mother took full control over his half, half sister, she wouldn't be able to find a proper marriage. But He's decided that he, it's time for him to have, mar to get married and have an heir to, so that he can inherit everything. And they're all joking about how he should just go down to the beach and approach a lady and say, I'm titled, I have this much money, will you marry me? And he's just like, whatever. And he goes down to the beach to kind of escape them all the next morning. And he meets Gwen and she is a widowed lady and her brother is an earl. And she is in this country town visiting a kind of a friend. Um, she's more friendly to this person than the person is to her. But it, she's like the only person that was there you're able to visit her friend because her friend's husband died recently and she was very lonely. So she was like, okay, fine, I'll come meet you and I'll come stay with you. And then it, and somehow ends up being agreeing that she's going to be there a month and she's two weeks in and she doesn't want to do it anymore. And they get into a slight argument because her friend is very much a victim like she plays the victim a lot and so she reads a letter from her mother talking about some antics of her brother and stuff and she's just like why would you do that to me while I'm suffering and I'm 
having a hard time dealing with things. Why would you try to make me laugh? And you're so insensitive. I don't know. It's it's just like, oh my God, why? I hate her. Or, I don't hate her, but she's not, I don't know. I don't like these characters because I don't like the way that they usually get play out in stories, but we'll see what happens. But so she has a limp and we don't, we don't really know how Hugo, what he recovered from, but he's very large. He's very broad chested. He is very muscly. He has very large hands. He's a giant of a man. And Gwen fell off her horse and broke her leg. And there's a lot more to that story, but it wasn't set right. So she has a limp. And so when she was wandering around the beach, she was worried about the tide and she didn't want to walk back across this rocky beach. So she tried to climb and a rock gave way and she severely sprained her ankle. And Hugo just happened to watch it all and ended up saving her. And they're slightly antagonistic because even though he is now titled, he does not want an aristocrat or a lady as a wife because he has, I don't know, preconceived notions about what they are and, or who they are, I guess, and the type of people that most ladies are and their personality traits. And he is immediately intrigued by Gwen, although he, and he assumes the worst and he assumes the worst, but then she keeps surprising him because she's, because she's laughing at herself and she doesn't want to be the center of attention. She doesn't want to get stuck at this Duke's house to heal for a week and she just doesn't want to deal with it. And then of course, all of his friends are like joking, like, oh, we told you to go find a woman at the beach and you come back with a woman <laughs> and you're carrying her kind of a thing. So there are good moments. It's just, it's like I'll get sucked in a little bit and then it's, I don't know. And then I just get sucked back out, which is part of the reason, one of the big reasons I didn't enjoy the other Mary Balog ba that I wrote. I think it's Mary Balog um, that I read and that was the Gilded Web and that one also had some other things that I wasn't very fond of. And it had very religious overtones and things like that that also didn't help my enjoyment of the other book. But so I'm definitely intrigued. But I think because I didn't enjoy the last one as much, I'm definitely more cautious. And the writing style is, is a little bit for me. But <laughs> I checked my hoopla and... I checked out the audiobook because it was available to borrow. So if worst case comes, I can just listen to it super fast tomorrow at work. But we'll see how far I get tonight. Usually I can get 100 pages in about an hour. But I mean, I spent about an hour and I only got 70-ish pages. So, but maybe now that they've met, and we kind of get the setup stuff done. It'll move a little bit quicker, but we'll see what happens. I still need to take a shower and then I'm going to go to bed and read. I don't know how late I want to stay up reading tonight, but I definitely want to try to get through most of this before Rake Appreciation Society tomorrow. So there's that. And then I have a couple hauls. Well, I don't know. I say hauls, but they're just like one item each. But, and then we also have our calendar. So let's I guess get going here. Um, so I have Tuesday and today's for calendar wise. So let me just pull everything out here. Oh my gosh, this week, this week has been crazy. And it's that time of year where like we're starting to get busy at work, but we're not like completely slammed yet, but we know that it's coming. My boss calls it like we're busy, we're fairly busy all year round because enough people in this town have snowblowers and there's enough commercial uh, mowing companies that we usually have decent work year round. But my boss calls it the April, May, June insanity. And so we know it's coming and it's already started coming on Monday. I just kept being like spring is sprung, <laughs> spring is sprung because we were fairly busy. And it's fine, but it's like, 
the where we are right now is like we'll get little rushes of people but then it'll be like dead and it's like once we're in it and we're just constantly busy and like running around with our heads cut off it's fine because we're in it and we're doing it but it's like we'll be super busy and then we're dead and then we're super busy and then there's a lull and so it's just like oh there's that tension there of it's starting but we aren't there yet but anyway I was just going to talk at you while I got things unpacked and then I started talking longer than it took me to unpack. So, on Monday, we attacked and defeated the Cyclops dude. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned, and if I did, I'm sorry for mentioning mentioning it again, but I, I know I mentioned the Kickstarter for 2023 and it's linked down below. It's um, good till the end of this month to the end of March, but I don't think I mentioned this time that it's like a sci-fi space fantasy theme. So I'm super excited for that. And they've had in there, oh, okay. Well, yesterday we leveled up, sweet. But yesterday, um, or not yesterday, but in there, updates which they do every once in a while they're doing they gave you an example character sheet of like a droid character and then every time they do an update they're doing like a mini story so I've been saving all the emails to play because I haven't I want to wait till all of the updates are out and then the story is done and then I'll probably just sit through and just play it by myself unless you guys want to see it but it seems super cool and there's a lot of different kinds of characters and like aliens and droids and stuff. So I'm excited to see what happens there. So we are leveling up. Okay, so it says, congratulations, you gained enough experience to increase your hero's level. Take a rest. Okay, so we are moving to level three. And we have two points to allocate however we choose to our hero's traits. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intellect, wisdom, and charisma. Okay. So. Because I got the hero book. This is our current character sheet. We are now just turning the page. So we are now level three. But I do need to make sure that I transfer over some things. So we have four meal rations. Um, we have 28 gold. Um, we have tournament points. We have 10. Ten. Let's see. And our virtue is a positive two. Okay. And then we have a plus one to our attack from the necklace that we're wearing. So I will get that changed in our new attack. So this is a plus five. Oh my gosh, I just put my hand on this. And wiped away all my tournament points. Okay, so we have two points to allocate. So what we had before is our strength is a plus one, our dex is a plus four, our constitution is a zero, our intellect is a minus one, our wisdom is a plus one, and our charisma is a minus two. So... I think and I need to be better about using my abilities because we also gain a couple of monk abilities. So I feel like I'm just going to keep continuing upping. I don't know how high we can go. It didn't say that there was a max. So I think I'm going to give another point to dexterity. So we're going to make our dexterity a plus five. Um, 
Okay. And I think I'm going to leave our wisdom. I don't know. What do we got? So I'm half tempted to give it to charisma. So it's a minus one instead of a minus two. Because I feel like that could be a difference. So I think I'm going to do that. So our charisma will be a minus one. And then that will keep our strength at a plus one, our constitution zero, our intellect at a minus one, and our wisdom at a, as, a, as a plus one. So I think we're going to go with that. And then it also says on, so this isn't normally what happens with a level up, but it's also mentioned here on our page to take a rest. So that means that we heal. So I'm not going to worry about transferring the damage over. And we don't have any other conditions that would need to be removed with that. So there's that. And we're all leveled up. Um, the two. Okay, we did get two more um, abilities that I'll just let you know. So one is a chi use for, I'll just read it off of here, tranquility. And that's using a chi point to ignore all effects of restrained, weakened, frightened, and confused, which we haven't, we've passed all of our checks for those so far. And then we also got fierce strike, which is once per page at a D6 to a single attack roll. That's cool. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. Yeah, I, we need to start using our chi points. Because a lot of them are once per page page although okay we have four chi points but they reset after a rest so I guess we do have to be kind of choosy with them but that's okay so that was yesterday's so not a bad one to cram in with something else because that's just leveling up and not super fun game wise although leveling up is always fun but it's more like bookkeeping stuff okay so it looks like Winners might be being declared for the tournament. So let us see. The people cheer as victory ceremonies have begun. The festival has come to a close and everyone has showed up today to view the winner of the tournament of lords. There is music in the air and happy faces everywhere. View the results to see how you did and claim your prize. Okay, we are at 10. Okay, if the result is between 8 and 10, champion. The crowds cheer and shout your name. People bow when you walk by. Kids run up and ask for your autograph. Some even request employment under your new position. This title also comes with an immediate monetary reward of 20 gold. You are told you, you will meet with the king's council later to discuss your land and duties. Oh my god cool so the only difference there's only one slot higher and that's 11 or more so we were one tournament point short but that's okay we might it might have been from the magic one <laughs> that we didn't get any points but I'm okay and maybe with the tiger I can't remember if we got tournament points from that one but whatever so that is good we got an extra 20 gold and we are officially a champion. So we are at 48 gold. And I'm going to write on here champion because I don't know if we'll need to know that information later. And I'll write it down so at least I have it for a quick reference. So sweet. So that is the calendar for yesterday and today, Wednesday. And I think that's all we need. Sweet. Okay, so there is that. Cool. That's fun that we've leveled up again already. I feel like, let me just take a peek. Yeah, it's only it only goes up to level six. So we're halfway through our levels. But if it's tiered like real tabletop games where, and even I think even video games are the same way, where your lower levels, you level up quicker because it takes less experience, but then it all rises exponentially. So then those later levels are always harder to attain. But so last things last for tonight. I got 
two packages today. One of them was at work that I was super excited of. And it was crazy that they ended up, I expected one to come on Monday and then it just didn't show up till today. But first off, unexpectedly, today I got a false start by Elsie Silver. This is technically not supposed to be out till Friday, but I got it two days early. And I mean, let's be honest, I might be struggling with the proposal so much. It's upside down. Because I really want to read this. This is book four in the Gold Rush Ranch series. This is the final book in this series. And I cannot wait. And isn't it gorgeous? Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. And I'm excited. I'm so I'm so excited to read this. I cannot wait. I will be reading this next when I finish the proposal. If I don't give up on the proposal and just pick that up anyway. And then the other package I got is from Novel Grounds. And I had ordered some of their small town merchandise that they did for the month of February. But I did not... I got, I ordered two mugs, which I showed in a haul video, which I don't think is going to go up till next month. And then a t-shirt and the t-shirt just showed up today and it's definitely kismet because it's a Gold Rush Ranch t-shirt. Look at it. Home to Double Diablo, Ruby Creek, British Columbia, because it's set in Canada. Oh, look at this, Gold Rush Ranch. If there was a mug in this design, I definitely would have gotten a mug. But it was like beanies and t-shirts and hoodies and I think maybe even sweatpants. But I'll link it down below. I got this from Novel Grounds. Um, it's not out yet, but because I have... The haul that I showed the mugs in are, is my like tax refund haul is what I called it. So that'll be out in April. <laughs> but uh, the other mugs I got, I got a Tilikum Washington mug, which is Claire Kingsley's Bailey's Brothers series where that's set. And I got a mug in that and then I just got a generic small town mug. So stay tuned for that. But I'm also... Now that I have everything from my order, I'm probably going to post a picture. Although I might do my LC Silver one tonight to be like, look what came early. But yeah, I'm super excited. I love, 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 love Gold Rush Ranch. And then Double Diablo is the like main horse character in the first book, Off to the Races. My favorite contemporary book for 2021. I will never stop saying that. And uh, Billy is the heroine in that book, and she calls him Dee Dee. <laughs> and, and he is the father to the cult in book three that Stephen helps raise and fosters. And I'm excited to see what horses we meet. In a false start. I cannot wait. So if, you, if you've if you read the other books in the series, I'll do a little bit. So this is a, although I know I've talked a lot about this book. It is a, it is called A Small Town Brother's Best Friend, I think is the, what she says. Yeah. Small Town Brother's Best Friend. So Stephen is the hero in book three. And, and that one is the front runner. Yeah, the front runner. And this is his younger sister, Nadia. And then this is Griffin, who is a grumpy recluse and his best friend. There's also a 14 year age gap is what it said on the back. I knew it was going to be age gap. I didn't realize it was going to be that big of an age gap. But Nadia is also training under, I can't remember her name. The heroine from book three because she's a veterinarian and she kind of takes Nadia under her wing to be her assistant. And I think that she's going to kind of take 
Based on what it seemed like at the end of book three, Nadia is interested in taking veterinarian classes and doing something in that same line of work because she's really enjoying it. I can't wait. It's a grumpy griff. And I'm not the biggest fan of age gaps, but I don't hate age gaps. It just has to be really well written. And I trust Elsie Silver so much. And I cannot wait. And I know this is the end of the series. But, but, she has teased hints. And, or she's done teasers and hints for whatever series she's doing next. And I think it's going to be the heroine Violet from book two two's family um because they live in a different city town on a ranch and they're more of like a farming ranch so they have horses and stuff but they aren't strictly a horse ranch like in here but i can't wait for whatever else lc silver writes and i haven't even read this one yet but i have seen amazing reviews and i cannot wait i cannot wait to read this i'm sure when I read this, you will hear all of the gushing. I just can't wait. And I did see there are trigger warnings that I saw that she put in the front or content warnings. So there is adult material, including references to alcoholism, domestic and childhood abuse, and sexual harassment. I know for sure the domestic and childhood abuse, and I think the sexual har harassment, I know for sure that, like, child abuse is going to be for Nadia. It could be for them both. But then it also says that traumatic brain injury is discussed, and I fully understand uh, says, I fully understand that the impacts of this type of injury vary greatly from one person to the next. It is my hope that I've handled these topics with the care and research they deserve. And I know that is related to Griffin somehow. I don't know what exactly, but I do know that he, just from stuff that we've learned about, and apparently there is a steamy scene in a tent. Because I saw that on her Instagram today. And she was like, two days till everybody knows what the steamy scene in the tent is about. And then she showed screen caps of like her beta readers and arc readers sending her messages about the tent scene. <laughs> so I cannot wait to figure out what's going on there. I just can't wait. I love Elsie Silver. If you have not read Elsie Silver, read Elsie Silver. Please, please, please. She is amazing. She is such a sweet person she's a great Instagram follower. She posts really fun videos of her and her family. And I think she's doing a live show on Friday too after the release, or maybe it's tomorrow. Although by the time that this goes up, it's already happened, but I'm sure you can watch the lives. But she's having a live show with Candy Steiner, I think, where they're going to be talking about their new releases because I think Candy Steiner released something today, I think I saw. Which I haven't read her before either, but I know that she's a popular indie contemporary author as well. But anyway, I'm going to take a shower and get back to the proposal and try my hardest <laughs> to not just pick up this book. Although I should just do it because I'm a mood reader and when I want to read something, I want to read it. Although I really wanted to pick up the new Claire Kingsley and I haven't done that yet either. So this is going to go over with my Claire Kingsley. After I take a picture with my new t-shirt and put that on Instagram. But I will be back to update you more on whatever happens in the proposal. And see how I do. But yeah. So I'm going to stop rambling because my 17 minute mark quickly turned into a 30 minute mark. But you know you get me talking about Elsie Silver and I just will not stop. Because I'm going to sing her praises forever and ever. For always and always. And thank you, Shelby Taggart, for hooking me on Elsie Silver. And I will bring everybody to the horse yard to read Elsie Silver. Or at least I will try my hardest. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to go take a shower and listen to the rain tonight because it's raining right now. And it's really pretty and I love the rain. So. I just completely ran out of steam. <laughs> It was like, blah, 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 we're done. All right. I will see you all soon. 
Hello. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Got my St. Patty's Day earrings on. I can twist them over. And I wore my green sweatshirt and green cami and green undies and all that today. But it is not very, not St. Patrick's Day for very much longer. It is 11.47. I don't know why I'm still awake. If I seem or look like a wreck, I feel like a wreck and I'm exhausted. But my sleep schedule has been so screwed up since daylight savings time. I don't know what's going on. I need to... I don't know, either to try to stay up all night and reset or take like a bunch of naps or something and like oversleep and catch up on sleep and catch up. But I don't know. I need to try to reset my things. But I just realized I didn't put my mic on. We'll put it on real quick. Okay, so we're going to do some quick updates because I'm exhausted and the cat is like, why are we still awake? Because she's right here. So, <laughs> I did not update last night about the proposal because I did not read any more of the proposal. So, when I woke up this morning to get ready for work, I still was on page 77. But Hoopla, I think I mentioned Hoopla did have the audiobook available for rent from my library. So, I downloaded that and I put that on, I listen at 1.4 speed usually. 1.5 is just a little touch too fast for me. If I want to kind of pay attention <laughs> better. So I usually stick with 1.4 because I don't know why, but there is a difference between 1.4 and 1.5. And it's a fairly significant difference from what I've noticed. But anyway, I'm gonna give this 3.5 stars. I did finish it on the way home from work. I just, I feel like Mary Balog's writing style, I have to be in the mood for. I see a lot of good things. There were moments where I was laughing this morning at work, listening to it, and there were moments where I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. Okay, okay. And then... I don't know, it just doesn't go the way that I want it, or it just takes a turn that I'm not quite expecting, or I don't know, it just doesn't, I don't know, and I was, I feel like this was a good one to switch to audiobook for me, because even though, <laughs> I don't know, or maybe not, it depends on how you take this, but because it wasn't as engaging for me, I was, like, when I was fully engaged in what was going on, I was definitely more engaged in what was going on with the audiobook than reading it. However, I was able to disengage easier and just kind of half listen. I'm pretty sure I missed some things based off of how the meeting went tonight and I was just like, uh, apparently I missed that portion. But because I was listening all day at work, I would, like, I would pause it if I was on the phone or something like that or dealing with a customer, but we were the, my boss's granddaughter's on spring break this week. So she's been in, in the afternoons. And today we were like playing go fish and playing a couple little board games and coloring and doing all sorts of stuff. So I wasn't like, I was focusing more on her and what we were doing than the audiobook. So I haven't quite learned how to multitask better with audiobooks. This is the first one I've read this year. I only read a few last year. But yeah, so I definitely will pick up Mary Balog in the future. I feel like it would probably be either more books in this series or I know her Bedwin saga or Bedwin series is really popular so I would probably lean more towards those but I need to be in the mood for this. They're very character driven although that's not an issue for me. I've read other character driven books before and really like them. It's just something about her writing style just doesn't quite engage me and makes me fall for the characters as much. It's almost like I don't know, they're too layered or too nuanced. And so it's a little overdone character-wise for me to really connect. Like, I really liked Hugo. I really liked Gwen. But I just didn't feel connected. 
and like be like, oh my God, are they going to get their HEA? And like, I wasn't invested in their HEA. I mean, partly because I know it's a romance and they will get their HEA, but I think I just wasn't, I think because I knew they were going to get it, even whatever internal strife they were having, I still just wasn't like on pins and needles or emotionally attached to them getting their AGA, if that makes sense. So 3.5 stars. I might round it up to four stars on Goodreads and just leave it as a 3.5 in my notes. And honestly, I would give it a three stars, but I gave the other Mary Balog three stars. And this is a lot better than that other one I read. And this one is, does feel a little bit more modern. I feel like the other one I read might have been published in like the late 90s or early 2000s. And this one was 2012. So this is definitely a newer of her works. So that might be why I enjoyed it more. But I couldn't give it a three star. But it just wasn't quite a four star for me. So I went 3.5. If I was like to get super, super specific, it might be like a 3.8. Eight, but we're not we're just gonna stick with 3.5 so there is that thank you hoopla for having this an audio format for me so I was able to get it done in time now I was all excited to start a false start it's sitting over there on my headboard I have not picked up anything else after Rake Appreciation Society, because I was on YouTube, I saw an ad for, I don't know, I saw Jessen, I finally had a chance to watch Jessen's thoughts on the second Bridgerton season. So I watched Jessen's video and then there was like other subscribers on the side. And then I was like, oh, I didn't watch, I haven't watched Super Junior's new music video, which came out like a week or so ago. And usually, like, they're the one K-pop band that I am, like, on the ball for because they are my boys. They are my fandom. I am an elf. And I hadn't watched it yet. But, but, it's a ballad and a mini album. And so I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I need to stay up on everything. Because it's a mini album and it's a ballad. And while I like Super Junior's ballads, I'm not the biggest ballad person like it has to be something really vocally or musically interesting for me to really enjoy a ballad and I don't know and Super Junior does have those but I was just like a ballad <laughs> but anyway I, I liked it I liked it but then I watched Taeyeon's new song because I knew it won a bunch of awards and stuff and I'm not she's from she was the lead vocalist for Girls Generation and I wasn't, I liked a couple of Girls' Generation songs, but I wasn't a big Girls' Generation fan, even though I'm like an SM Town stan. But so I watched that. I love her new song, I N V U. So good. So I watched, I watched it once and then I watched three different live versions of it. And then I was like, ooh, it's been out a month. Let me see if the, some of the vocal and musician reacts, people that I subscribe to have reacted to it yet. And only one of them did. But then I was looking for people to, who have reacted to it. Because she does some really cool vocal riffs in there. That I, I just wanted to see like what vocalists thought and musicians thought. But nobody I, kn I know and I follow has posted <laughs> about it. So I need to get on all my little uh, submission things. And be like, hey, hey, what do you think of this song? Definitely watch the live version because it's amazing. And then I got caught up on some of my vocal teacher reacts <laughs> videos and I just, you know, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and then I was like, holy crap, it's 1130. I was going to edit a video tonight, but it's a short video less than an, it's like only a half hour video. So I can still get it done tomorrow during the avalanche game and upload it and everything. And that's another thing that's screwing with my schedule. Puck drop is at 830 again tomorrow because they're still in California. And I'm over it. I'm just like, ugh. we'll see if I can even stay awake. I might come home <laughs> and take a nap and then wake up for the game. But it's a lot of rambling and I'm tired and I'm going to try to get through this quickly. So for the proposal, I used it for Love Has Sprung and I used it to cover the prop two word title. And then I posted on my blog about it. I don't know if I've mentioned it. I don't think I've mentioned it in any of my vlogs. But on um, a Goodreads 
romance readers challenge group which i've talked about before they're the ones that hosted the that are hosting the yahtzee year challenge year yearly challenge oh my god i can't speak properly here i don't know what these accents are um there is a quarter challenge that somebody else started in the same group that's taylor swift and there are 40 prompts which is a lot but it's for three seasons and so it's march 15th through june 14th and i thought it would be perfect because if i finish two of my love has sprung boards that will be 50 prompts and obviously i've already had five of them count but this has 40 prompts plus seven other bonus prompts that you can use to do the 40s but it doesn't it's not a bingo board or anything it's just you get levels so level one is five books level two is 10 books three is 20 four is 30 and five is 40. so it's just read as many as you want and fill these prompts so i decided to do it because most of them should be covered because they have most of the options like we'll see here in a second will have like most of the different prompts are based on a song and there'll be two different options for it so for example i used the proposal to cover white the white horse prompt which was read a book with a character who saves another or with white on the cover so most of them have like a more specific prompt or a more generic prompt or two generic prompts so they're all really really easily meetable it's just reading 40 books in three months which for some people is really easy for others not so much so there's that and that's all that counted for and then let's do the calendar real quick so yesterday we finished the tournament of lords and we became a, cha a, ca a champion. So let us see what today is. Looks like something magic is happening. There it goes. Okay. A lot of text on this one. Okay. I'm getting choked by my necklace. A loud bang like the explosion of a thousand blacksmith hammers is heard from above. The sky suddenly grows dark and everyone looks up. A shockwave whips across the crowds of people and knocks many to the ground. The clouds swirl and a loud wailing can be heard as you watch tiny objects fall from above. As they get closer to the ground, you can tell these are large stones and people. Okay. Well... Large stones and people. So are these people tied to the stones that are falling from the sky? All right. I don't know. I don't want to do too much speculation. And I need to not ramble as much. So let me get going here. Okay. So number one. Endure the shockwave. Roll a d20 plus constitution. Reminder danger sense. Danger sense is something that we do have. So. And our constitution is just a zero. <laughs> natural 20 Woo sweet so that's 22 okay the unexpected shockwave that emanated from the sky isn't knocking people down to a to due to a physical force as it cascades across the crowd it's sapping people's energy we got 15 or more. When the strange and unexpected wave of energy hits you, you feel yourself begin to grow weak and lightheaded. You are able to brace yourself to stop from falling over. You control your breathing until the feeling passes. Okay. So number two is avoid the falling debris. Roll a d20 plus our dexterity. Reminder, danger sense. So our dexterity is a plus five plus danger sense. So we are at a plus seven. Okay. Oh, before you resolve your role, you have an option to try to help and save others over yourself. If you do, gain one virtue point and take a negative four penalty on this role. Okay, but it says before you resolve the role. So that means that we can roll first and see what our option is so that we don't hinder ourselves by trying to help. So that's cool. So as stones and other objects begin falling from the sky, you race around to avoid them. The shockwave earlier didn't help your reflexes. So we are at a plus seven, and I'm gonna 
try to help people. So we're going to say it's a plus three. And then if I roll really horribly, we'll go from there. But I'm going to go with the plus three just to be good. Oop. And I rolled behind. What are we at? We are at an 18. Yeah, we are taking just the plus three. We're going to take the minus four. No big deal. So that still gives us a 21 and we needed a 15. So you get pelted by smaller pebbles, but you manage to avoid the larger chunks from the sky. So we don't take da damage, but because we did take the minus four, we do gain one virtue point. So that makes our virtue point a positive three. So I will get that marked down and that is it for today. I don't know what I'm going to have going tomorrow if I'm going to read anything or what's the plan or if we're just going to do the calendar and wrap up and then whatever might happen tomorrow. But I'm going to kind of leave it open ended. I don't think I'm going to pick an up or start anything tonight. I unlocked my web novel chapters for Under the Oak Tree tonight because I didn't do it last night. I, I opened the app and checked I opened the app and checked in so I didn't lose my like check-in streak for bonus stuff, but I didn't watch a video and unlock, unlock a chapter and I was like, whatever, I have two tomorrow. So I'll just probably do that and then I can read two chapters at a time every other day. But <sighs> my voice is starting to go out. So I'm going to wrap things up here and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's officially Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go to bed. I'll see you all soon. And we will wrap things up tomorrow. Not very many books this week. Just the one, I think. But that's okay. Because I've been wanting to watch TV and listen to podcasts instead of reading. And sometimes I just got to let my mind do what I want. And the only reason I forced myself to read the proposal was because it was for a book club and one that I really enjoy. So it did feel a little bit like work, but that's okay. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I have a physical copy of it. And I do plan to read the rest of the series in the Bedwin Saga by Mary Balog. I just have, to, I just know moving forward, knowing that her writing style hasn't changed that much between the two books that I read, that we're just going to leave it. So I'll see you all later. Bye.
Happy Friday. It is about 9.30. And we just finished the first intermission of the Avs games. Avs game. Just one. I hate these late night games. I hate these late night games. At least it's on a Friday this time. Oh, and I did my nails today at work. The Hattie was in. She's been in all week because of spring break. She's my boss's granddaughter and so when she was in yesterday she was like we're gonna do your nails tomorrow Mimi that's what she calls her and so she brought in a bunch of like glue slash press on nails and then the like sticker nail wraps so I chose this one it's kind of like galaxy I don't know I didn't do a good job of trimming the back portion of them and then some of them were like the blue. So it's like blue starry sky. Let me see if I can get my lighting. Focus. I don't know. And then my pointers have the gold stuff on it. And then the ones on my middle finger, I'm not going to flip you off, I promise, have the same kind of feel. But over the dark blue starry sky kind of a thing. It's really faint. They're a little more transparent than I thought. But this is the first time I'm doing nail wraps. And it's it's super fun because I don't have to wait forever for them to dry. And that's always a good thing. But anyway, so in case you saw, I've got pretty nails. <sighs> okay, so we have some things. Now, I'm going to be wrapping up this vlog here. So this week will officially end with me reading one book <laughs> that I crammed into like mostly a day. But guys, I just, if I'm not in the mood to read, I do not push myself to read. I mean, I kind of did with the Mary ba Baylog, but it was a book club book. So I think, like, I really want to pick up a false start tonight. But once the abs game is over, we'll see how I feel. I might wait to pick it up till this weekend. But I definitely want to read, but I'm just... I don't know. I'm just not 100% in the mood. And I'm just kind of like, bleh. But anyway, you just saw I did my tarot today at like early morning today before the sun rose was the full moon officially. That was the like 100% full moon point. So oh, tonight I did my full moon in Virgo. How quickly I forget. I'll pop it up here. Full Moon in Virgo spread. And I went with Emerald Lotus Divination again this time. I'll link them down below. I used my New Moon in Pisces one from them last last time I did a spread. But I checked them first and before I started scrolling through my TikTok spread. Or TikTok. Hashtag spreads on... Instagram. I don't know why I say TikTok. I hardly ever get on TikTok and the few times I do I've ended up just watching parrots <laughs> which I'm not really a bird person but I'm not an anti-bird person but it's just weird that what I watch on TikTok is parrots. But anyway so I did this spread it's another five card spread. As you can see, the questions are, what's the energy of this full moon? What's important for me to see right now? What can I do to take practical action in my life? How can I be resilient at this time? And how can I be of service and support to others? And let me tell you, this cycle <laughs> is going to be rough. I got two sword cards two cup cards as you've seen and then the justice card so it'll be a little rough but that's okay now the reason I decided to just go with this spread without going on is I've been wanting to do a spread here recently anyway on helping others through troubled, time, troubled times and being able to and just kind of seeing what I need to do better with myself in providing effective support for people who are struggling and so let me read you the description that she wrote on this it's it's not it's a little long but I'm gonna quickly go through it it's just a couple little paragraphs but so this tarot spread is heavily inspired by the teachings of Braca Goldsmith who I've never heard before and then it has a quote it is in the feeling of the pain and the feeling of the suffering that the defenses of the heart come down 
And that pretty much fit <laughs> the cards that I pulled tonight. It is so crazy when that happens. But anyway, so it says this full moon on March 18th calls us to sit with our deep feelings and start to make a plan of practical action to help us move forward. With so much going on in the world, now more than ever is a great time to ask yourself how you can be of service to others. How can you uplift someone? How can you reach out to someone who needs it? Be mindful of the words you say on social media. Be mindful who you support financially. Be mindful of where you're wounded and how those wounds manifest in your life and how you treat others. Rereading this after doing my spread... My mind is like completely being blown. I love tarot. My pulls and the what I journaled is like 100% on point with this. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm going to have to do some rumination later, but wow. I'm... This is going to be a tough cycle. I know that, but we'll get through. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. Anyway, um, I did, I didn't film everything. So in case you're wondering, some people <laughs> like to know, it's, uh, especially when it comes with like tarot, I guess, practices or tendencies on how people do things. So for me, what I do when I shuffle, I shuffle a lot. Um, four is my lucky number. I love fours. I love the way they look. I just, anytime I hear like four and 44 are really good numbers for me. And so what I do when I get a new deck is I do four piles and I just go one, two, three, four, and then I go backwards, four, three, two, one, and then I do two, four, one, three, and then three, one, four, two, and I do that four, and then I do that so that I have four piles. And this is what I do with a new deck. So the first time I shuffle it, and then I will do... The first two piles and shuffle them and then four times I'll shuffle those four times and then I'll do the second two piles, shuffle those four times and then I'll put shuffle them four times together and then I'll do the whole thing four times total. Um, when it comes to doing a spread with an already shuffled deck, I will split the deck in half, shuffle each half four times, and then four times as a whole. So you saw me, I didn't film the first little portion, but I did film the doing the whole deck instead of the halves so I do four 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 and then when I pull cards I take the top four out and I do one at a time and I just move them to the bottom and then when I lay cards I don't lay them in order and while I'm shuffling what I try to do is I try to think about the intentions and the spread and and that's why I read through kind of what was the th overall theme again when I sat down and I just was thinking while I was shuffling to put my good intentions into the cards of being supportive and trying to get through you know this next cycle and just kind of being aware of getting through this next little bit because things are going to start getting it really crazy at work and how I can be best supportive and best of service. And I just completely grabbed my mic. Whoops. That's what happens when you talk with your hands. But so I think about those kinds of thoughts and I try not to get distracted, but <laughs> the avalanche game was on. So we scored a couple goals while I was shoveling. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> but that's okay. It was <laughs> It's fine. I don't, I'm not like super duper strict about it, but yeah. So I try to think about that. And then when I lay out my spread, I don't lay it in order. I look at what, you know, this spread will say. So it's like one and then two slightly lower and then two below. And I'll just kind of lay them how in a random order and what feels good in the moment. And you know, sometimes it kind of works and sometimes it doesn't. But I've only really had to pull clarification cards since I've been doing bigger spreads. 
a couple of times. I feel like most of the time this is what works for me and what gets me good, reliable, easily readable for like readings for myself. But yeah, so there's that. So if you wanted to know a little bit about my tarot stuff, there is that. So I did get two little packages today. So we'll do those two little packages and then we're going to do our calendar and officially wrap up. So we'll start with the non-bookish first. So I got my, let's see, I guess the tape isn't really a fortune cookie soapbox, monthly box. I don't even remember. I think I glanced at what the scent descriptions were. I haven't even looked to see what April was, but apparently it's Hello Spring. I feel like I remember there being fruity scents. So, extended collection launches, Mar launches March 25th at 2 p.m. Central Standard, so 1 p.m. Mountain Time, which is where I am. If you sign up to get their newsletters, you always get a notification anytime a collection is up for either a pre-order or a second restock or a third restock, which they very rarely do, or when a collection goes live, they do mini collections and CYO events and different things like that. And they also do special boxes. So there's usually an Easter box, a Halloween box, and a Christmas box. So you'll get emails about those. I did order the Easter box. It's minion themed, so I'm super excited about it. But so hello spring and let us see. So one of the four stickers available in a world where you can be anything, be kind. I'm telling you, bees are on trend. And I'm gonna say that it's Bridgerton based, but this is a really pretty pale yellow love this i like i like this so i will be turning this one into a magnet for sure i have some that i save for stickers or for gifts for people but so let me see okay so first things first spick and span toilet bombs super cute I like their toilet bombs. They changed. They used to have them in like smaller bricks or like little cubes. And then you just would pop one in your toilet. And then I do it in the morning before I go to work. And then when I came home, my bathroom had nice aromatherapy. And then it was just a quick little do -do -do. They didn't have to do very much scrubbing. And I really like, I really like their toilet bomb formula. So let us spick and span. Ooh, mm, that's got like citrus, orange, lemon in it and something, something else, something else a little extra, but I like it. I like it a lot. I can smell the lemon <laughs> and I just got a little bit, I salivated a little bit because I love lemons. But this is a toilet bomb. Okay, so let's see what it says. That is going to make my bathroom smell great. Clean never smelt so good. Refreshing citrus notes blend seamlessly with fresh yuzu, grapefruit zest, and delicate white musk. I think it's the yuzu that was that little extra I was smelling. But yeah, five out of five stars. I love that. Yes, I will definitely be buying a full-size Thing. There are two hearts in here. It looks like they're hearts, but these are slightly larger than the little cubes that they used to do. I know they're doing like molded ones, so I could probably break this in half and get four, four uses out of these total because it's just me. Okay, so let's see what's next. Ooh, look at this pretty blue it looks a little more teal on my camera here but it's more of a definitely more of a sky blue let me see if i can yeah that looks a little bit better so this is fresh start spa mist Ooh, this is a new product so bring the spa right to your shower Spray three to five times in a steamy hot shower. Okay, so this is an aromatherapy mist, which I have their cold buster aromatherapy mist, but I haven't had any of their others. Cool. 
avoid contact with eyes and skin. So yeah, you want to spray it into your water. What I do with my cold buster is I'll spray it up above my shower. When I, once it starts getting warm and getting a little bit steamy, I'll spray it above the shower and then I'll wait like 30 seconds and then I'll get in the shower. Okay. So let's see. Ooh, this is, has menthol or peppermint or something. And maybe eucalyptus. There's something else in this too. Mm. I think it's just the eucalyptus. The more I smell it, the more the eucalyptus comes through. Perfect. So... Fresh start, spa mist. Time to turn over a new leaf. What about peppermint and eucalyptus leaves? <laughs> Go me. <laughs> oh, this scent will leave you ready for a new day. The crisp notes of peppermint and eucalyptus blend together in this tantalizing fragrance. Yeah, this is not very different from the cold buster one I have. I feel like the cold buster one I have has a little bit more of a impact of the like menthol and peppermint notes because it is more sinus cleary and this seems like it's a little more toned down for like aromatherapy while the other one is made to like help you clear your sinuses but I I really like that I really like that let's see what's next and there is just four things because this is a normal so we only have four cents be kind, goat milk and honey cream. Okay, so this looks like a hand cream. They've never had a bottle like this before that I've seen. But I know it's hard to get supplies and things like that. Let us see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's Stop. I hate it when they do that. Look at all this. I was just going to smell it. I didn't want to put it on. What is... Okay. I just looked at what else other product we have because if they were similar, I didn't want to do... Oh my gosh. I wiped that off and more is coming out. Close it. Quick. <laughs> the honey is really f faint. I bet that's a wonderful sound for you guys. ASMR of lotion. Okay, so this is, I wouldn't say they have a whipped cream that I really like that's a really thick hand cream and I usually use that and not their lotions. They do have a thinner um, moisturizing product that they call body milk that's very, very liquidy. It's, I mean, it is a slightly thick consistency of like 1% milk. So maybe not quite whole, maybe kind of like whole milk. But there is some floral, I feel like, but now, yeah, in my skin, like on my skin, this just smells florally to me. I'm sure this is so intriguing for you guys watching me sniff my arm. It smells slightly floral to me. I could smell the honey at first, but rubbed in, it's just like a very faint floral to me. So be kind, goat milk and honey cream. We all know it is important to be kind to others, but you can never forget to be kind to yourself. Soothing aromas of rich golden honey, creamy milk, roasted brown sugar pecans, and velvety caramel. This product will have you stopping your busy schedule to smell the honey. I didn't. I don't get caramel. I don't get pecans. I mean, I guess I can kind of tell milk or just generic dairy. And I could smell the honey at first, but now it just smells slightly florally. That might be the mix of the honey and the milk, but I definitely don't get caramel or pecans. Pecans? Pecans. I say pecans. <laughs> oh, 
oh my gosh, this thing is just exploding all over the place. Look at it. It's just, it's just growing by itself. I don't want to put more on. I'm going to, where's my, where's my, hold on, hold on. I don't, what is happening here? Ah. Okay, Kleenex. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's happening. Why are you doing this to me? Oh my gosh, it's still expanding. Quick. It like, because there was so much there, it wasn't closing properly. Okay. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I stick to, I usually stick to the thicker creams and I'll do the body milk. The body milk is really good if I take a shower in the morning or in the middle of the day or before I'm going somewhere because it's a lot lighter so it soaks into your skin faster but it's still I feel like pretty moisturizing for what it is I kind of got away from using like normal lotions like that but anyway let's look at the last item and then we can move on they have a pretty pink tissue paper this month their tissue paper always matches their theme so this is full bloom laundry scent booster just add one to two scoops directly into each load of laundry with your typical detergent for an extra boost of flavor. So this is like the little scent beads, which when I need to buy more for my laundry, I put on my list laundry sprinkles. <laughs> so laundry sprinkles. Ooh, but this is more, yeah, this is definitely more of a powder like a crystallized powder. So I'm going to be careful smelling this because I don't want to inhale it. Hmm. It definitely has, so you can see how it, you can see it sticking to the side of the bag there. It has some floral notes, but it's not too florally. And there is a hint of I don't know, like ozone or like or something that I will I'll get in like snow scents or actually or maybe it's like something grass related because it, it has hints of it are reminding me of one of the Highlander grassy mossy scents that they did when they did their uh, brave collection but it has more of a floral twist on that than just like straight like greenery. Hmm. We'll see how correct I am. It's like a fun game I always play. <laughs> okay. Live a life in the light, not one in the shadows. A bright fragrance that combines floral notes with fresh green grass to produce a clean, airy aroma. So yeah. Oh my gosh. I got lotion on my nose now. Great. So that's it. That's it for my fortune cookie box. I will def I think I'm going to give this one a four out of five until I can use it in something. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use this in my laundry because I'm very specific. All of my, my laundry detergent, my laundry booster, my laundry sprinkles, and my dryer sheets are all the same scent by gain. So I'm a little picky. I don't know how introducing another scent to this is, but I know that you can use these things for like other things to stick in like, I could probably find a really thin cheesecloth bag or something that I can stick this in and then throw it in like a dresser drawer or something for that extra little boost of freshness or something. But so that's super fun. So I'm gonna give that one a four out of five, five out of five, like I said here. This I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to say a four out of five because I do wish it wasn't quite as light. And yeah, this goat milk stuff, I think I'm going to give this like a two. <laughs> Mostly because it doesn't smell like anything. It says it's supposed to smell like, but that's fine. Sometimes you can't win them all, but that's what's fun is because you get 
Some of these are more full size, like I feel like they might have larger sizes of these, but this I would consider more of a full size product. But you get smaller things to test sense before buying a huge or a full size thing, which is always fun. But anyway, so that's Fortune Cookie Soap. I have them down below. Uh, I know if you sign up for their newsletter, uh, Shannon, who's the one of the owners, she does notify when they open up the wait list for more of the subscription box. It's $16.95 a month as of now with free shipping. And then you also get a $10 off of a $25 code that's good for about a month. And they send those out when they get shipped. And you, they are shipped around the 12th of the month. And then in one of their Facebook groups, they do scent spoilers each month. And those are usually posted by the 10th. So you have a couple days to decide if you want to skip or move forward. And they do charge like mine comes out and it might be everybody's. It comes out on the 11th of the month. So like March 11th, my payment came out. But that is for April's box or maze box they're like ahead because they need time to figure out how much of their stuff to make and all of that but anyway i'll stop talking about it you can check out more of them below and then i have a little amazon package so recently earlier this week alona andrews i'm signed up for their newsletters and their like blog roundup updates every time they make a blog post it gets emailed to my it gets emailed to me and they are officially now that ruby fever has been submitted and is coming out in august i believe that was their last traditionally published contracted book so they are now officially 100 percent indie published writers and they did a blog post talking about how they've done a couple blog posts they did another one today or late last night, it was in my, in my email this morning, that they, they answered a couple more questions. But so they are going to go forward with Indie. And they are also saying that they're going to stop announcing projects. So like before they start working on them. So we won't find out what book they're currently working on until closer to release date. And that will hopefully save them stress about deadlines and people getting frustrated because I guess people email them and are like, why are you working on this book and not this book that I want? I want this book, not the one you're working on. Or then people will be like, I don't know, I guess people are crazy. <laughs> but also during one of these blog posts, they announced that a couple of books that were never available before in, well, one of them wasn't, was only available as an ebook before, now has a physical copy edition. And then the other one only had a special leather bound edition through some like magazine or something like that. And that now has a normal paperback edition. So I bought those two because I wanted to get on them while they were there. And with them being indie, I wanted to support their new like official foray. Because they've done indie published books before, but now that they are 100% indie, I wanted to get them and support them. Because I, I love Alona and Gordon Andrews. So, the two books that they did, we'll go through. So, the first one is Small Magics. And this, I actually have read everything in here. This is a bind up of Kate Daniels' novellas. So it has a questionable client, retribution clause of Swine and Roses, Grace of Small Magics, Magic Tests, and then the current POVs. So previously, the current POVs, all but the 10th one, are free available on their website in an ebook, or they were all in here. And then on most of these other um, novellas were available in anthologies and a couple of them I have the paperbacks of the anthologies but we also get this cool Kate Daniels artwork that they commissioned themselves it's not whatever the publisher put on there isn't that so cool oh Kate is such a badass Kate is such a badass look at her I love it and I just had to have and there is some artwork in here so there is, and it's all black and white. So there's Kate 
with, I'm guessing because this is the first one, Magic Tess, I'm guessing that's still Surratt and not her second sword. I think there was four pictures in here. And these are in the ebook as well, but... I love Kate. I love Kate. It's just... <sighs> Let me see if I can quickly find any other artwork to show you. <sighs> and I definitely, definitely need to pick up... Ooh! Ooh, the skirt! Ooh, look at that. <sighs> Fern! Freaking Curran. <sighs> this series has ugh, completely blown me away and I cannot wait. Okay, so I just found three. I don't know if there's more than three, but I found those three. And then the prettiness on the front. And then the other Alona Anders is the Kinsman Universe. So recently book three came out, The Faded Blades, which I had in a haul which you'll see coming up here next month, I think, is the haul it was in. And then it was in one of my vlogs when I got it. But so that was book three in the Kinsman universe. And this is a bind up of book one, book two, and one of, no one of the novellas. So it's Silent Blade, Silver Shark, and the novella is a mere formality. I can't remember if it's a 0 0.5 or 1.5. But isn't... Oh, I love all of the artwork that they're getting for their indie published stuff. It's so gorgeous. But we do have a couple more artworks here. I don't know who these people are, so we can just look at the prettiness. It does say on the back that there are four, or I saw in a description somewhere that there's four things of artwork, I think. Maybe that's why I thought there was more in the other one. Okay, and then here's the artwork for Silver Shark. Ooh, look at him. That's like Asian dragon style. Interesting, interesting. I know that these are more sci-fi. At least Faded Blades is sci-fi, so I feel like all of these are probably sci-fi. Let me get to a mere formality. Ooh, I love that sleeve. I love these kinds of sleeves. Super cool. Whoa! <laughs> Creepy. I didn't notice until I was like, oh, what's up? Move it down. There's teeth behind her. That's a little weird. My voice just cracked. All right. I only saw those three. So maybe it's those three plus this. I don't know. Whatever. Pretty artwork is pretty. So that's my little haul for today. So. I'm going to stop rambling at you because we are already at a half an hour. Hold, oh, the avalanche scored. It is now, we're up three to zero. <laughs> well, that's cool. And there's five minutes left in the second. I completely missed the third gold talking to you. So let us do our calendar and then we will wrap up. So yesterday, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yesterday, people in rocks started falling from the sky that was fun. So let's continue with whatever apocalypse or crazy thing is happening. Oh, great. Wow. All right. Looks like a demon or a devil type creature. He's dragging this guy. Look at this lady. All right. Let me focus and let me get light on her. If I can zoom in. Focus, focus. All right, it's not focusing, but maybe if I move forward with it. No, I don't know. Anyway, this girl is going. <laughs> Her face is a little bit funny, but she, it's a little more funny than like terrifying. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. 
The debris stops falling and everyone moves to come out from the shelter they found. Several screams are heard nearby. You search for the source of the noise and find a grotesque demon attacking a villager and attempting to take flight. You rush in to stop the demon. Okay, so roll for each round, d20 plus attack and damage, and it looks like we are going to have three rounds. Cool, cool, cool. Let's take this demon down. I'm all excited by myself and my kitty is completely asleep. Okay, round one, fight. We have an attack of plus five. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That is a 15, so 20 is what we're starting with. Okay, so 13 or more, hit the demon. And our damage is a d10. And that is a six. Okay, six or more, the demon is stunned this round, just barely. Okay, round two. That is an 18. Nice. So 23. We're doing good. We're doing good. So we hit the demon. Okay. So damage is a nine. I was like, I couldn't tell because I was like, which, which side's the dots on? So five or more demon is stunned. So we stunned him for another round. All right. Final round. And that is an 11, so 16. All right, 13 or more. We hit the demon. Okay, final roll. And that is another nine. Sweet. So seven or more, the demon dies. Okay, so we stun the demon two rounds, so we collect two gold. And then we also killed the demon, so we get another gold. So we get three gold. And we have killed the demon. Sweet. So that brings us up to 51 gold. We are rolling in the money. Not that we're going to really need the money right now. Because we're fighting demons I guess. But anyway. I'm going to wrap up here. Super fun. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble about mostly things that didn't have to do with books this week. Because I only read one. <sighs> But I just, you know, you, you just can't push it if you're not feeling it. And even though I started this booktube channel, I'm not going to force myself to read more than any book club books unless I will sit here and I will just ramble to you about whatever I want so I have content. But I hope you enjoyed watching this and I promise I'm pretty sure I'm going to have more bookish content next week. And I have a lot of fun plans coming up soon. Next Friday is Bridgerton Season 2. And I do plan on doing a vlog style of me watching Bridgerton Season 2. I know a lot of people are going to be vlogging them watching it or doing in-depth reviews and stuff like that. But I thought I'd throw my two cents in there as well. Just it flood everybody with Bridgerton content. I have been thinking about doing a season one rewatch. Maybe before season two. But if I do, I'm probably going to fast forward through some of the th other storylines. Because the whole stuff with Marion did not like. The whole stuff with Sienna and Anthony did not enjoy. But yeah, I hope, I hope, and I'll go over through some, what I kind of want from season two before I start that vlog, but just as a little sneak peek, I do hope that Colin feels more like Colin from the book, that Benedict feels more like, well, no, I actually liked Benedict a little, Benedict a little bit better in the show. I don't quite know what's going on with the weird art parties, but that's a whole other thing. And then... I hope Anthony feels more Anthony in the show and that they give more grace to Violet because Violet is such an amazing mother to the Bridgertons and I did not like the way that her children treated her a lot of the times in season one. 
And Violet deserved better. She definitely deserved better. Because all of her kids in the books have such respect and love and support for their mother. Even more so after their father's passing. But anyway. I'm rambling on. I just can't stop myself. See? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This officially concludes week 11 of 2022. And hopefully I will have more books for you next week. But until then, I will see you all soon. Bye.